What up guys, your boy Quake, and before we get into this Pop Smoke documentary, I want to first say follow me on my social media at QuakeGW on Twitter and on Instagram. It really helps me out a lot, and leave a like on this video because it helps out the views and algorithm. That's all I have to say. Enjoy the documentary. I'm going to say, give like a message to my young niggas, you feel me? Like niggas like us coming where we come from, we can't afford to fuck up. Mm. We can't afford to slip up, make no mistakes, you heard? Because they watching and they and they, they want us to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We got all odds against us. Speak on woo because everyone's screaming out woo. What does it mean for those who don't know what woo is? Woo is just woo is a lifestyle. Woo is a life. Woo is a secret society. I can't say no better than that. That's you know it. What I'm to say? <laughs> woo is a lifestyle. Woo. Can we get a big woo in the room? Woo. They go not too. Woo. Every once in a while, there's an artist that comes out in hip hop that grabs the person's ear immediately due to their distinctive sound. And in an era in hip hop where most of the artists are sounding the same and essentially copying each other, Pop Smoke was something very different. His voice alone was something that could grab your attention even if you didn't know him as an artist. His voice was something massive. Ain't no parking at the light. Ain't no staying in us. Keep a K with us. Please don't, please don't play with us. Nah, we up and aiming up. Ain't no hiding. When you heard it, you knew it was coming from something way bigger than life itself with a gritty, raw sound that I frankly haven't heard in quite some time, especially in today's era with most artists having high-pitched voices. You would think Pop Smoke was a grown man, someone possibly in his 30s who had been smoking cigarettes his whole life, but that wasn't the case. When this guy blew up, he was only 19 years old. Not only did he look like a grown man, but he had an old soul like one as well. Mix that with the gritty sound of UK's drill music and the crazy influence of the Brooklyn streets and you got a superstar in the making that's forever going to shift the sound of hip hop. When I first heard Pop Smoke, it was on the track PTSD. I remember scrolling my Twitter timeline and someone tweeted that track out and said, this is the new version of 50 Cent's Miniman. And of course, me being a huge 50 Cent fan, I immediately checked the track out. However, I went into it expecting it to sound like 50 Cent's Mini Men or to hold it to that light, and that was the wrong way to listen to it. So when I first heard it, I wasn't really impressed with it. But the thing that got my attention with him was his voice. And the thing about his voice was that it was either a hit or miss for the listener. It wasn't somebody in between. You either really loved it or you hated it. And for me, that's what I feel like made Pop Smoke so special because it invoked a response. And that's always better than no response at all. After checking out the PTSD track, I went through the whole mixtape and completely fell in love with this guy as an artist. So much so that I tweeted in August of 2019 that I would love if Pop Smoke would have signed to G-Unit. It would have been a perfect fit. But at that time, I did not know he was already signed to Steven Victor's label and Universal Music Group. Bashar Jackson, also known to the world as Pop Smoke, was born on July 20th, 
1999 in the Canarsie section of Brooklyn, New York. He was raised by his Jamaican mother and Panamanian father. Growing up, Pop Smoke said that he always had a musical background because his mom would sing at the church and he would join in at the church choir and sing himself. His father would also play African drums and through the church choir singing sessions, that's how Pop Smoke learned melodies and learned how to slightly sing. Hell yeah, I was always music. I always had him like a musical background. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mommy in church, dad played the drums and shit. Okay. And not like the not like the uh traditional drums that we know like like the congos and, right okay you know what i'm saying and like play like african drums like doodumba nice yeah so you know i always have musical background growing up in the brooklyn streets pop smoke says that most kids there wanted to become one of these three things a basketball player a rapper or a drug dealer and Pop Smoke says that at one point in his life, he explored all three of those. And by the time he got to middle school, he eventually involved himself in gang activity, which is where the whole Wu movement came from. Pop Smoke says that he was going in and out of school because he kept getting into fights. And in middle school, he brought a gun to class, got caught, and got kicked out. And when he's 15, he won a basketball scholarship to a Philadelphia prep school, but due to a health condition which he had, which was a heart murmur, he said he couldn't continue playing basketball. So his only option was to go to the streets. He eventually got a weapon charge for bringing that gun to class and had to wear an ankle bracelet and be on house arrest during certain times. Of course, bro, I was on a bracelet for two years. What y'all call it out here? Attack. Yeah, we was on house arrest. For two years? For two years. How old were you then? I was, uh, I graduated with it. <laughs> and I just graduated a year ago. Oh, for real? So, um, Oh, you were jammed. So I had it from 17. And, and that, that house arrest, when could you go out of the house? Uh, just during the day? To school. Just to school? That's how I graduated, because that's the only, the only thing I could do was go to school, school and work. You know what I'm saying? So I know how I feel. And when resorting to hustling in the streets, it ended up paying off for him because at the age of 16, he drove a BMW 5 Series. And he says because of that, it gave him a taste of the finer things in life. So he wanted to find a way to make it without any problems. And as time went on, at the age of 18, he finally graduated high school, even though he was having a lot of problems in school. Pop Smoke says that he would hang out with his homies who just happened to be rappers, and one of them was Jay Guapo. One night, he joined Jay Guapo in the studio. They ended up going to sleep, and Pop Smoke decided to take his chance at rapping. But I knew that I could do this rapping shit. The first song I made, like I was saying, like I made a song. I was just in the studio with the homeboys who mm -hmm. was rapping, and I made a song with them. Yeah, like He got so high. And then I just just took over. Yeah. And I made a song, and then I went straight to the block. I tested it out, and everybody went crazy, crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you we got this dance. You know what I'm saying? Was this my shit? That dance right there. Yeah. The little leg kick shit. <laughs> Once they start doing that, you already know. This clip, you got one. <laughs> so then the whole the whole hoe was behind me after that. He says he looked up a random beat on YouTube, which happened to be. 808 Mellow's beat, which is a UK producer. I found this. I found his beat on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Welcome to the party, beat. No. Uh, panic. Right. Okay. Yeah. No. Crip. What's it called? Crip, criminal. Like, it was one of his beats that I made NPR on. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying. And then I kept using his beat because I'm like, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm like, this worked. So what did you do? Just rip it from YouTube. You just found just it and then just- from YouTube. <laughs> right, right, okay. And the first song he recorded is a track called NPR, which stands for Money, Power, Respect. He then took the track and showed it to everyone in his neighborhood and they all loved it. And that gave him the motivation to create more music. He ended up shooting the music video for NPR and did 10,000 views in one day. So naturally he continued that mini buzz that he had and immediately worked on his second track. And then on January 28th, 2019, he dropped the visuals and the track 
for flexing. But this track had a more direct message in it and a more aggressive one. He decided to diss the ops that he had issues with in the past. Once Pop Smoke became known, there was a video that surfaced online of him as a teenager getting smacked up by a couple of guys on the ops. Well, eventually Pop Smoke got his revenge and actually posted the video of his revenge on his official YouTube channel. I can't share it with you guys here due to YouTube guidelines, but you guys can easily find that. So on this track, he decided to take aim at them and diss a couple of other people. They of course dissed him back on other tracks, but by the time that happened, Pop Smoke started to become a household name. And that flexing track proved to build his buzz once again because he did 100,000 views in just one day. He continued that and recorded his next track titled Meet the Woo and dropped the visuals for it on April 16th. 2019. He says that this one got 100,000 views in just an hour, which was crazy for him because he had never experienced anything like this in terms of attention. And that attention would forever change his life. He ended up getting the attention of a producer by the name of Rico Beats, who had connections to Steven Victor, who recently launched his own label, Victor Victor Worldwide, and was looking to sign new artists. And he loved Pop Smoke's sound. So he reached out to Pop Smoke, invited him to his office in New York City. In a newly released Complex interview, they revealed the details of how everything went down. They talked, and Pop Smoke revealed that he wasn't only just a rapper, but that he could actually sing and was doing it before rapping. And he introduced a couple of tracks. The first one was the track called Something Special, in which he was remixing to Mia's 1998 hit So Into You. And this blew everyone's mind in the office because they were expecting him just to be a drill rapper, but he revealed that he was a lot more than that. So of course, Steven Victor immediately jumped at the chance to sign him and they officially inked the paperwork in April of 2019. So Steven Victor says that him and Pop Smoke hatched a plan that he would release a couple of mixtapes focused solely on the Brooklyn drill sound. They wanted to position him as the leader of an explosive subgenre that was taking over New York City. Then once Pop Smoke was an established star with his own signature style, he would deliver his debut album, which would show his melodic side with bigger, more commercial songs, like the Something Special track that he played in the office. But Pop Smoke would have to be patient that when the time was right, he would get a chance to reveal to the world his full talent. While this was happening, the UK producer 808 Mello noticed that Pop Smoke's buzz was growing and that he was using his beats without paying him. So 808 Mello reached out to Pop Smoke and pressed him for the money for the beats. But Pop Smoke offered him something even better. He offered to fly him out to New York to work with him on his upcoming mixtape and said that he could be an in-house producer for him. So the UK producer agreed, flew out to New York for the first time, and they started working on his debut mixtape titled Meet the Woo. As, I, as it worked out, I'm like, when I went to go make another song, I just automatically said, let me go back to his page. Yeah. See what else he got. Uh -huh. And I just kept going to his page, going to his page, and taking it, and then eventually he pressed me. You got to pay for some of these beats. Yeah. Because he see the buzz going up. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't realize that the buzz, that I didn't know how the game worked just yet. So right. I'm like, he's like, yeah, you're going to make some money off of that. Well, but. I really wasn't making any money. I wasn't even thinking about money. I was just doing it just to see yeah. if it worked. Then which song was it that he was like, bruv, you got to cut me in? Uh, flexing. Okay. Flexing. And then after flexing, I didn't pay him. He then when Meet the Woo drop, he's like, yo, come on. <laughs> so, so that mixtape <laughs> is pretty much all of his productions. Most of it. So you guys weren't in the studio working together. You literally just took the collection of beats eventually, and made the mixtape. Eventually, before the mixtape came out, I flew him out so he could come So there was a lot me. of studio time together. Yeah, yeah, I That's flew him it. out. So he definitely was out there in the States fucking with me. Then on April 23rd, 2019, the 808 Mellow produced track, Welcome to the Party, was officially released. And this track would forever change Pop Smoke's life. My name was actually Papa. Let me stop it. I'm Panamanian. 
So my, my grandma called me Papa, like, you know what I'm saying, since a kid. But my name on the street when I was a kid was Smoko Guwa. Like, that was my IG. So the homeboys didn't want to call me Papa, so they called me Pop. And they just mixed the pop with the smoke. And they just came as one. Within just a couple of months, Pop Smoke's Welcome to the Party became a New York national anthem. He wasn't just locally known anymore. The whole state knew who he was. He actually got invited to Hot 97 to do an interview and talk about his success as well. With his buzz growing, they decided to release his debut mixtape, Meet the Woo Volume 1, on July 26th, 2019. The project debuted at number 173 on the U.S. Billboard 200. The project was mainly produced by 808 Mellow. The only track that wasn't produced by him was the PTSD track. After the release of this, Pop Smoke was getting co-signs from major artists across the world. The first person to give him a public co-sign was Nicki Minaj. She ended up hopping on the remix of Welcome to the Party. Then major UK artist Skepta hopped on the remix of Welcome to the Party as well and added his own twist. So now Pop Smoke has officially gotten the co-sign of someone big from the UK and someone big from New York. Now it was time to grow him globally. Although the Welcome to the Party track never ended up charting on the Billboard Hot 100, it did end up going gold. What Pop Smoke and his team noticed was that there was another track on the mixtape that was gaining a lot of steam. And that was track number six titled Dior. This track took Pop Smoke to another level and the numbers proved it. The track ended up peaking at number 22 on the Billboard Hot 100 to whereas previously he never landed on the Hot 100 and it ended up going platinum which means it sold a million copies. After this his peers started to take notice and in November and December of 2009 he started doing a lot more touring. He started performing at small clubs and then eventually it got to bigger and bigger places. But before that in October of 2019 he made his acting debut in the movie Boogie. The New York Times did an interview with the director Eddie Hong this is what he had to say about Pop Smoke's performance. Pop shows up to the audition, Palm Angels, head to toe, and he's just a kid. But he has the voice of 50 Cent and Paul Mooney. You can tell he's weathered, he's an old soul. Within two takes, you can see the swag just come out of nowhere. He explodes on camera. I stopped the audition right there. He can turn emotions on a dime. He could be funny, he could be mean. A lot of actors just don't have that depth of emotion and experiences. But because of what Pop's gone through, he has a tremendous well to draw from. He gave me a thousand percent. There were tough 16 hour days overnights and he shot five overnights in a row. Kids were coming on the bridge to watch us shoot the scenes. We would play Pop Smoke's records. All of our actors, the extras, the kids on the bridge watching us shoot scenes. Everyone was doing the woo dance. It was pretty special. Pop Smoke around this time also got to meet his idol, 50 Cent. This is someone he grew up listening to. He loved the Get Rich Die Tryin' album. And as you guys can tell by his music, it's very heavily influenced by him. I just met 50. I met 50. I was starstruck as shit. I couldn't stop smiling, nigga. Because we look so much alike. It's so unreal and shit. And then it's like, damn, look at this nigga. Like, they used to call me 50 growing up. You know what I'm saying? So like, I'm like, they used to call me 50, now I'm in front of the real 50, like, I just fanned all the way out, you know what I'm saying? In November and December of 2019, he ended up working with quite a few different artists. Quavo, who is a member of the Migos, ended up reaching out to him and they went in the studio and recorded quite a few tracks. This is what Quavo had to say. He said, he was new, but I felt like I was talking to somebody that had been in the game for three years already. When I see somebody like that, I feel like I need to share my information, you know? So I told Steven, hey, I'm a big bro him. I'm going to put him down on the do's and don'ts. Travis Scott ended up embracing him too and reached out to him to come and perform at his Astro World tour. That's when he ended up meeting Travis Scott, Young Thug, Meek Mill, and various other artists. Pop Smoke and Travis Scott linked up in the studio and made the track Gotti. This track was released towards the end of 2019 and it peaked at number 69 on the Billboard Hot 100. And since Pop Smoke's music was heavily influenced 
by the UK drill sound, it was only right that he goes overseas and performs there for the first time. DJ Semtex, who's a huge DJ in the UK, said this, I'm like, yo, I want to do the first show in London. Booking agents worried because he's new. He's only got a couple of tracks. I don't care. I need to bring him to the UK first. This guy is hard. I put the tickets on sale at a 600 capacity venue. Sells out within 10 minutes. 1,000 capacity. Sold out again. Straight away, it was a zoo. Skepta, who's one of the biggest UK rappers, actually brought him out during one of his shows. He said, some of the shows he did were a bit smaller club shows. Then he comes to my shows and it was maybe 10,000 people. You know how the sound people do this thing sometimes where they turn it down for the opening act and turn it up for the main act? I was going crazy on the sound man because he didn't turn the sound up. Pop came off and said, yo, that was crazy. And I said, nah, man, I'm pissed. He's like, yo, Skep, chill, bro, I'm cool. That was lit to me. He was just appreciative to be able to do it. And the UK overall embraced Pop Smoke like no other American artist. This was the first artist to actually bring the UK drill sound to America and do it successfully. After having a huge 2019, Pop Smoke decided to slow things down when it comes to touring and interviews and decided to lock himself in the studio in the Bahamas with A-list producers to work on his new mixtape, Meet the Woo 2, and songs for his debut album. After recording the mixtape and some tracks for the album, he immediately started promoting the second mixtape, Meet the Woo 2, and the first single that dropped was on January 15, 2020, and it was called Christopher Walk. In the same month of January, huge fashion designer Virgil reached out to Pop Smoke and invited him to attend his shows at the Paris Fashion Week. And this was a huge accomplishment for an artist that is fairly new. He sat front row at the Louis Vuitton show as well as the off-white one. This is what Virgil had to say while doing an interview with the New York Times. He said, I had this vision before he got to Paris of how that trip was important. I was like, I'm shooting a music video for you because the people need to see you in Paris. You know, it's like you're not just rapping about it, you're in it now. They ended up shooting the music video for a track called Shake the Room featuring Quavo. Quavo was at the event as well and he actually gave him tips on how to dress when going out there. It was Fashion Week and he was a, and it was his first time just being a part of Fashion Week. So every time he would like try on clothes, he would take a picture in the mirror and send it to my phone and ask, is this all right? And I would tell him, yeah, it's cool. And he was like, for real, woo, for real. And I was just like, yeah, it's cool. And me and, me and Tate was laughing about it because, you know what I'm saying? This is his first time he thought he was feeling weird and he was uncomfortable, but you know, fashion is uncomfortable. So I had to just put him down and just, Put him up on game. When Pop Smoke returned from Paris on January 17th, he was arrested by the FBI at the airport in New York for allegedly transporting stolen property across state lines in connection with a Rolls Royce Wraith that was reported stolen from Los Angeles. Pop Smoke put up a $250,000 bond and bailed out. The day after his airport arrest, Pop Smoke had a meeting with someone who would permanently alter his perspective on his career, which was 50 Cent. In a sense, he'd been leading up to this moment for months. 50 represented to him the possibility of a career without compromise. Steven Victor detailed the meeting. He said he was asking Pop leading questions. Pop is answering them and he's like, bro, you do not want to be doing all that. All the guns, you got to stop that right now. I get it. It's something that's necessary because of the life you lead and the people that's around you. But you, you, you can't be doing that because they're waiting for you to fuck up and your friends are not really your friends. They're waiting for you to fuck up too. He was like, you could either continue down that path and there's a high chance that you'll end up in jail or dead or you can do this. Pop is like, what's this? He was like, what I got going on. I sold 30 million records. I'm rich. I'm doing movies. I can get anybody on the phone. I could do anything. And this could be you. I think after that, he realized that he could be himself and be a megastar. It was at this moment that Pop Smoke started to embrace himself as an actual rapper. And in interviews, he actually started opening up a lot more. He went on a promo run to start promoting his new mixtape, Meet the Woo 2, in New York. The mixtape finally dropped on February 7th, 2020, and it debuted at number 7 on the Billboard 200 and sold 36,000 copies the first week. This became Pop Smoke's first top 10 debut on the chart, which became a huge accomplishment because he had only been doing this for less than a year. 
Then he flew out to Los Angeles to continue finishing up his debut album. Unfortunately, he would never get the chance to do that. On the early morning of February 19th, 2020, at 4.30 a.m., four armed men entered his Hollywood Hills home in California and shot Pop Smoke multiple times. He was taken to the Cedars Sinai Medical Center, where he was later pronounced dead. Stay, stay down, you huh? Well, shoot for the stars, huh? Aim for the moon. The news of Pop Smoke's passing Wednesday morning surprised everyone. Who would want a young 20-year-old kid just coming up in the rap scene dead? The first speculation was that it had to do something with the Rolls Royce being stolen back in January. Then more information came out and people speculated it was the fact that Pop Smoke accidentally posted his address on his Instagram live and from that the four robbers found out where he lived and it was just a robbery gone bad. The LAPD didn't have much to go off of but speculations like those so they started to investigate but for a while it was an unsolved murder. Everyone who was close to Pop Smoke or worked with him sent their condolences online. Nicki Minaj was one of the first to post on her Instagram about the tragedy. She posted a picture of Pop Smoke and said the Bible tells us that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Unbelievable. Rest in peace, Pop. Quavo, who took Pop Smoke under his wing, also posted on Instagram and said, Fly high, woo. Got to know this kid. Very talented, humble, respectful, and appreciative. Always asked questions. Big sponge to knowledge. Fast learning young boss. And the huncho was here to share that anytime you called me. R.I.P. 50 Cent, who was Pop Smoke's idol, also posted on his Twitter and Instagram and said, RIP to my man Pop Smoke, no sympathy for winners, God bless him. There was another speculation going on when Pop Smoke passed, and that was that his homies around him set him up to get robbed and potentially killed. But Mike D, who is Pop Smoke's brother, decided to clarify on Instagram that that's not what happened. He posted multiple photos of him and his brother Pop Smoke and said in the caption, can't nothing express the pain I'm feeling. I just lost my effing brother, my heart, my dogs. You guys have no type of sense or sympathy. Y'all don't know what's going on. Y'all came on here playing investigator and bashing me on the internet. I would never in my life set my brother up. We ate together, broke bread together. This is really my mother's child. I don't got to explain nothing to nobody that don't know me. But for the ones who know me, know when you saw me, you saw Pop. We live in such a effed up society. Y'all gotta wake up. Just know I got you forever, brother. The truth will come to light. Until then, sleep in peace. Steven Victor, who's helped Pop Smoke execute his vision, went on Instagram and expressed how he felt. He said, this is extremely painful and I won't ramble on. Your energy, your passion, and the love you gave will be missed so much. You believed in us so much it was contagious. We believed in us. We were going for it. Regardless of what his rap sheet said, he was a genuine person with a kind soul, heart full of gold, a good kid with a huge heart who just wanted to win. Put on for Canarsie and inspire the world. It's tragic, devastating, and my heart hurts for everyone that knew Pop. Rest easy, my brother. I love you. We love you. You know the fucking vibes, B. I'll never forget what you told me after that meeting two weeks ago, and we will make sure that foundation gets started. After Pop Smoke passed, his family and close friends were in disarray, so they weren't thinking about continuing his legacy or releasing any new music anytime soon, until 50 Cent gave a call to Steven Victor. Steven Victor says that after Pop Smoke passed, he was very upset and depressed and didn't want to do anything regarding Pop Smoke's music because he couldn't stand to hear his voice after he just passed. But 50 Cent gave him a call and said they need to continue Pop Smoke's legacy because Pop Smoke's original plan was to release the album in May of 2020. So 50 Cent said it was very selfish if they didn't execute his actual vision and help out his family while Pop Smoke's music is still hot. 50 was like, what are you doing with the album? And I was just like, nothing. I was like, I'm not going to put an album out. Like, I was just like not in the right frame of mind emotionally. I was like, yo, Fifth, I can't even listen to his music, let alone think about 
put together the album. You know what I'm saying? Like this is, mm. and he was like, he was like, yo, I, I get how you're feeling, but you can't be. He was like, you can't be selfish, and I was like, be selfish. I was like, what do you mean, be selfish? He was like, yo, you gotta, you gotta get out of this feeling that you that that you're in. You know what I'm saying? You can't be like depressed and um stop the legacy that he was building number one i was like you he was like he was like you have to do the opposite you got to go towards it you know what i'm saying you got to finish the album and then on top of that he was like how do you expect like everyone around him in terms of his family to benefit off of all the work that he put in it's like he it's almost it'll almost be like everything happened in vain if you don't put the album out so 50 cent offered to executive produce pop smoke's album for free. And just like that, Steven Victor and 50 Cent agreed to finish Pop Smoke's album and have it ready for the summer of 2020. Steven Victor said that Pop Smoke's album was 70 to 80% done before Pop Smoke passed. In the complex interview, he said, right before everything happened in LA, we were there working on finishing the album because he was supposed to go on tour starting the first week of March. So the whole plan for that trip in LA was to finish the album. Then we would have been just mixing it and mastering it while he was on tour. Steven Victor sent 50 Cent all the files of Pop Smoke's unreleased music and a lot of the tracks just had hooks on them with no verses. Some tracks just had verses with no hooks and some tracks were actually completed. So it was up to 50 Cent to finish the rest of these unfinished tracks. So he announced on Instagram that he's executive producing Pop Smoke's album and immediately he started reaching out to other artists to get on the album such as Roddy Rich, Drake and Chris Brown. After this, a couple months went by with no new updates on the investigation of Pop Smoke's murder as well as no new updates when it comes to his debut album. In the complex article, Steven Victor, 50 Cent and Jess Jackson who was Pop Smoke's engineer detailed the moments of trying to finish up his album. Here's what Steven Victor had to say. He said, 50 told me if you have an issue with putting it together because he's no longer here and there's no way to promote it, I'll promote it for you. I'll get in front of it. If you're not in a space mentally to be able to work on it, I'll listen to the songs and sequence it for you. And I'll executive produce it. I'll get on the songs that he wanted me on. Steven Victor continues and says, 80% of the songs were finished the way he wanted them finished. He might have added some ad-libs or changed the verse here and there, but most of the songs on the album were done. Jess Jackson, who's Pop Smoke's engineer for both of his projects previously, said this, It's been tough, but at the same time, it's beautiful to know that I can bring his music back to life. And I know that he trusted in me. I've got to go with the memory of what he would have told me if he was still around. I have to recall all the conversations that I had in the past about previous records and apply that mindset to the new stuff. I want to do him justice and there's times where I just wish I could FaceTime him, play him the records and say, hey, what do you think about this ad lib? Too early? Obviously we're not in the position where we can do that though, so I just have to use my better judgment. I've had to do a lot of wizardry in terms of creating additional double vocals that didn't pre-exist on this album. If he was around to this day, I would ask him to get back in the studio and just lay in an additional double or something, but we're not in the position to do that, so we have to just make do with what I have. He knew exactly how he wanted this album to sound. There were times where stuff was recorded a little bit poorly and I would be in the position where I had to re-record it or just finesse it in a certain way where we're getting the professional sound out of a big studio. But I know he's not here so I wouldn't change it to a large extent. Sequencing the album, I wanted to make sure the songs butt up against one another because I really don't like fades. The guys at Republic wanted the track listing a certain way. But when I got to sequencing the album and said, you know, these two certain songs aren't going to work together, can we change it? They all went back and deliberated and we figured out a different sequence that would work. When you listen to the album, everything is sequenced, so each song is in time with another. I like albums to flow. Finally, in May 14th of 2020, fans got an update about Pop Smoke's album. They announced that the album was going to release on June 12th, 2020. As the release date started closing in, People were wondering what's going on with the album. With no artwork being released, no track list, and no singles, they decided to ultimately push the album back, and instead they released a single off the album called Make It Rain featuring Rowdy Rebel. And the track debuted at number 49 on the Billboard Hot 100. A couple weeks later, on June 18th, 2020, 
Pop Smoke's family announced a nonprofit foundation called Shoot for the Stars. This was a foundation that Pop Smoke and Steven Victor talked about weeks before Pop Smoke passed. Steven Victor said this, Today the family of Bashar Pop Smoke Jackson is announcing Shoot for the Stars, a foundation established by Pop Smoke prior to his passing and led by his mother. The foundation is meant to inspire inner city youth to do just what the name states shoot for the stars and to help urban youth everywhere turn their pain into champagne by making their dreams a reality but behind every failure is a blessing don't nobody like no debbie down ass nigga you are so take your pain and make champagne with it you dick and with that announcement they also announced the album's title which would be shoot for the stars aim for the moon pop smoke originally wanted virgil to design his debut album cover as well as packaging and presentation so on june 29th 2020 days before the album's release they released the official artwork for the album that was designed by virgil and immediately there was backlash to virgil for designing this album cover because a lot of fans felt like it was just slapped together in five seconds and presented to the people 50 cent himself was out outraged and decided to go on Instagram and post fan-made album covers and asked everyone on his Instagram page what album cover they actually liked. This outrage actually gave great promotion for the album because everyone was getting together to design something special for Pop Smoke. This is what Virgil had to say about the backlash he got for the artwork. He said, I think it's important that we as young black kids in community support and reference each other rather than looking for it outside of our ecosystem. To me, the original album cover I made was exactly that. There was a bond and synergy amongst both of us just being ourselves. It was completely organic. I'm a fan of his music and he was a fan of how I was putting things together on the design front. I actively reached out and I was like, man, let's build. It's not like, let's build so you can wear my clothes. I'm all about it being organic. Steven Victor and I have a history. So it was like, whatever you guys need, I'm down. Pop Smoke's legacy needs to be on the forefront. I wouldn't want to take away from the shine of the project and the art in any way. I think you saw that I quickly was like, hey, if this isn't it, let's have the music be at the forefront. I spoke to his mom in that week of the turbulence about the first album cover. We were all aligned and super clear. Let's have this be about Pop Smoke. It's not about me. The album's out and people can hear his voice. That's what people need to see to get through this moment. Ultimately, Pop Smoke's mom decided to choose the official artwork. And on July 3rd, 2020, Pop Smoke's debut album, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, was officially released. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and sold 251,000 copies in its first week. This was also Pop Smoke's first number one album. Another crazy accomplishment was that Pop Smoke's album was the biggest posthumous album release since Michael Jackson's This Is It in 2009. All the tracks on the album also landed on Billboard's Hot 100 and it even earned Pop Smoke a top 10 hit with the track For The Night with Lil Baby and Dub Baby. It peaked at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100 as of now. And just recently the album has sold officially over 500,000 copies which means it's gone gold. And today on July 20th for Pop Smoke's birthday they decided to release the deluxe version of the album which features 15 new tracks. During the release and the success of this album, police officially closed the case on Pop Smoke's murder. They ended up arresting five people, three adults, and two juvenile suspects. They let one person go and decided that the four individuals that they caught were the ones that were involved in Pop Smoke's murder. The LA County District Attorney's Office announced criminal charges against 19-year-old Corey Walker and 18-year-old Keandre Rogers, who were each charged with murder with special circumstance allegations that the killing went down during the commission of robbery and burglary. With the special circumstances, the death penalty is on the table. On top of those two, a separate pair of teenagers, the youngest being 15 and the oldest being 17, were also charged with one count of murder and robbery in juvenile court. Their names weren't released as they're still minors and the two adults have their bails set at $1 million each. With Pop Smoke's huge album success and the murder of Pop Smoke being solved, these moments at the core are still bittersweet. We would all much rather have Pop Smoke here 
to enjoy this moment. But unfortunately, that's not the case. However, his team and family have executed his vision the best that they could, and I'm sure he's very proud. This was only a 20-year-old kid that got his life taken away when he had everything going for himself. He was only in the rap game for less than a year and had such a huge impact. From bridging the gap between UK drill to American hip hop to creating a unique sound that was very distinct, he was something very special. Who knows how far he would have gone and what he would have become. The potential was through the roof. His foundation is something that's definitely going to keep his legacy going and is going to impact people for the better. This was the new generation's 50 Cent. It was very clear, and it's sad that these kids won't get a chance to witness that. What 50 Cent said about Pop Smoke's passing is very eerie, but it's very accurate. What you see when you talk to me is what happens when you get rich. What happened to Pop is what happens when you die trying. Happy birthday and rest in peace to Pop Smoke. The smoke will never clear. What do you want your impact to be on the music industry? Like 100 years from now, you want people to remember Pop Smoke did that, he did what? Pop Smoke came in and changed the game. Pop Smoke came in and showed them niggas a new vibe. You know, the whole sound, the whole vibe, the whole movement. Different. You know what I'm That's it for today's video. If you guys want to support this channel further, you can do so at patreon.com backslash diverse mentality for just a dollar a month or more you can help support this channel further a link is in the description below like comment share and definitely subscribe i do videos like this daily on hip-hop news and much more so definitely subscribe follow me on twitter and on instagram at quake gw like us on facebook and i'll see you guys in the next one peace